For the better half of the past decade, traditionalist and nuanced NASCAR fans, they have practically begged the France family for more short tracks. Every day, they've got to save the Speedway gear on, just praying that NASCAR, they're going to go back to the roots, go back to the way the sport was. Well, guess what? They've finally gotten their wish. The newest short track on the NASCAR schedule will be the Auto Club Speedway. That's right, as last Tuesday, plans resurfaced for a redevelopment of the property by The Athletic. The current two-mile oval is going to overgo a trans configuration down to a 0.5-mile short track. And looking at the renderings, it's pretty much a Bristol-Martinsville hybrid with long straightaways and bank turns. And now, this is all barring approval from the San Bernardino County. And if it does get approved, construction will begin following the 2021 running of the Auto Club 400 and should be ready by the 2022 season. And now, over the past few days, I've seen social media and pretty much the consensus is they're ready for short track racing and they are celebrating the demise of this super speedway configuration. But what I gotta say to that is let's not lie to ourselves and succumb to deception. Auto Club was one of the better and more unique tracks on the NASCAR circuit. It was a track with multiple racing grooves and the speed of Michigan mixed with the old rugged asphalt of Atlanta. And what I've heard all across Twitterville is the racing's been stale and it hasn't been good since 2016. And it's easy from an outsider glance to see that as the last three cup races they've had a notoriously long green flag run to end the race. And I think that is largely in part to the current package and the package used in 2018 not exactly being suited for Auto Club. Utilizing the smaller spoiler they used before with a slight increase to about 600 horsepower would make these cars more challenging to drive and put the track's multiple racing grooves better into play. Pretty much the Xfinity package, which produced a rather entertaining race in the spring. But even then, green flag passes have increased immensely for cups since the new aero package in 2019, and the number nearly doubled in 2020. And so, I pondered about this for a good hour is, why would NASCAR try to fix something that is far from broke? After all, we saw Bristol get repaved when the racing was near perfect, and then we saw North Wilkesboro and Rockingham get axed when the racing was almost superb. And once again, like those other moves, this just all comes down to that almighty dollar. NASCAR and ISC want to make some big money and sell the land for redevelopment. After all, the Los Angeles market is stacked with endless entertainment complexes, and then you have millions of people looking to spend their hard-earned money to go to some of these places. And really, in the last year, the competition has definitely ramped up, at least in the sports realm. The Dodgers, they just spent over $100 million to renovate its historic ballpark. And Stan Kroenke's $5 billion toilet bowl is finally set to open this weekend to no fans. At least St. Louis football actually had fans come to the Dome. From an economic standpoint, bulldozing large positions of the track and selling a couple hundreds of acres to developers is just common sense. This might just be a groundbreaking entertainment complex that could see restaurants, shops, and tourist attractions anchor the speedway. Places like these have been lacking on the NASCAR schedule, and I think getting a complex like this would be a major boost to the sport and it would make them look better as a whole. Or you never know, it could just be another industrial park that adds nothing to the fan experience and will pretty much be seen as a quick buck to sell acres. But regardless of what the corporate heads do with the property, I feel like a big part of Auto Club's racing history is now misplaced in a way. From Jeff Gordon winning the inaugural race to the stretch of insane finishes from 2011 to 2016. Amongst the new fans, it's going to be pretty easy to forget those moments once new winners start winning at this track and new memories are created. I also think of NASCAR champions Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch. They won their first ever races on the Auto Club Speedway. But now, as they either race, enter the grandstands, or the suites, they're going to see a completely different track from what they saw. Finally, you've got Alex Bowman, Martin Truex Jr., and Brad Keselowski, all winners of the two-mile oval. They've won at the Auto Club Speedway, but once the new track comes in, can they really say that they've won at Auto Club? I mean, you just think about it. Going from an intermediate to a short track is a drastic change. I'm definitely interested to see how NASCAR classifies this change as whether it's the same track or a different track. But either way, if they keep the two tracks distinguished or they just combine them all into Auto Club's history, it's going to come off a bit puzzling. 
Not to mention, this track was featured as the final race in Herbie Fully Loaded, Ford vs Ferrari, and the inspiration for the Los Angeles Raceway in both Cars and Cars 3. This track had a big role in pop culture in Hollywood, and I feel like this is kind of like paving up the field of dreams and turning it into an apartment complex. Now, I understand, sometimes things change, there are better ideas, innovations that come along, and in saying that, I think we're going to see some great racing at this track, and there's going to be some massive things that come from this next-gen California Speedway. But on the same note, the current Auto Club Speedway, it's already a perfect track, and I was looking forward to crossing it off my bucket list one day. In a perfect world, it would have been either Chicagoland or Kentucky, but as we've seen in 2020, this world is anything but smooth sailing and absolutely perfect. We've just got to move on and not forget what the two mile oval gave us in the past 25-ish years and what they could bring us in the final 2021 running. So anyways, this is NRF signing out and just remember, life's a beach and then you drive.